Broadcasting from the lush but not lavish studios located in the basement of the O'Keefe Institute for Advanced Film Snarkitude, but not this week. Uh, <laughs> it's Real Spoilers, episode 708, Don't Vurry Darling. I always want to say this like I'm Zsa Zsa Gabor. <laughs> I don't know why. Because why? Oh, okay. she would always say darlings on everything, and so I would uh... be like, don't worry, darling. Like, I don't know. Because I'm 52, and that's, that's the happy... pop culture <laughs> Happy belated birthday. Oh, yeah, happy I, belated birthday. Thank the you. The only I one of us not in March. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't That's, fishing. <laughs> I almost tried. I almost said something uh, on the group post about how, you know, Tom had to go and not have a March birthday. All of our hosts, our past hosts, four of them are in March within like a week of each other. And then Tom goes six months later. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh. So uh, I, I now I want to do the math. Is there a reason all your parents were like boning each other and <laughs> – uh, What's that work out to be? September, October, September, September, September of eighty one. Yeah, I don't know. Was there something going on that you were the I one? Know. You were the only I'm, one that was there, Tom. Yeah, so I have were, no idea. Yeah, I would have been. I would have been eleven, twelve, depending on how long your You're the respective his... fathers could last. Go grab your almanac. <laughs> yeah, go out figure it out. Make I know. Now I'm like, was there a historic? Was there like a like a nationwide blackout? Like what? Like <laughs> I don't know what. Cool. I mean, it's it's worse for us September birthdays because we know what's nine months before September and it's the holidays. Yeah, it's oh. so like well done. Yeah. It, Everybody's exactly. off of work. <laughs> yeah, you know, here's I'll make it even worse. That's uh, Nicole. I'll introduce her now. She's our guest, so I'm glad yeah. she's chiming in because she's also a September baby apparently. And uh, I am. my only I only have one sibling, a sister. She's six years older than I am. All I can think is that. New Year's Eve, right? Like it was just <laughs> yep. like sure, why not? What like, else we get? What else the balls dropped and now I'm the yeah, yeah, they did. What else are you gonna do? Yeah. <laughs> it's so like, that's the only oh. thing I can think because it's like there are no other kids. There's a six year gap in between. Yep. And then my parents didn't stay married. So I was, you know, I was born to save to marriage, first of many failures in my life. So uh <laughs> and they were they were uh and I, I, here's just an interesting Tom trivia. I was born on my parents' wedding anniversary. So, oh, wow. Oh, that's weird. Oh, what are the okay. odds? Yeah. One in 365. Those Apparently, are the odds. Apparently. So. Oh, yeah. the odds. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll do the math. I can Thank even, you. I'm a mass communication major, <laughs> and I can do the math on that. So um, let's go around the virtual table, and everyone can introduce themselves. I this pointed jo- anyway, and we're on Zoom, and I pointed. Like, <laughs> we know. We know. We just doing. know. Yeah. yeah. This is Who is that? Oh. Now I thought. Now I screwed yeah, up. Now you do it. <laughs> this, this is Kevin. This is Tom, and joining us via the magic of Zoom Tube is Nicole Ackman from Awards Watch and Oscars Central. Hi, thank you for thank joining you us, and thank you for not sitting there in silence waiting oh, to chime in. <laughs> <laughs> no, I had to get in on that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> thank you guys so much for having me. Thank you for coming in short notice, so it's not just uh, you know three guys discussing the patriarchy. So. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes we see these movies, and we're like, I mean, we try to get a guest every once in a while to drop in. And then certain times we watch a movie, and we're like, Yeah, we need yeah, a guest and yeah. a different yeah. perspective. <laughs> yeah, That's I don't understand the ending. I thought this th- this was delightful so for the like- first forty five minutes, and then. They went in in such an ugly direction with this utopian society. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> what's the worst that could happen? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Shameless plugs real quick. Let's knock those out. Don't forget we're available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, wherever you find a podcast, you can find us. While you're there, be sure and follow us so you never miss an episode. Maybe leave us a review. Tell us how hot Joe is, apparently. So weird. So uh, now that we're on YouTube, people can see us, and apparently the, internet has, the internet has spoken, <laughs> and uh, and Joe's a fine piece. It's the beard. what we're being told. It's the, it's the beard. Like, that that was not, not, yeah. When we got video, that was not the first comment I thought that we were going to get. Yeah. <laughs> like I mean, I'm I'm happy for Joe, but for the people leaving the comments, for the rest of us, it's it's hurtful. Oh yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I apologize. Oh my god. 
<laughs> like, Joe's wow. like John Hamm over there I with feel that like, beard. I feel like Florence Pugh in this movie. Yeah, I'm like <laughs> I've, I've I've lost so much weight. And That's true. Yeah. That is and fair. Then, you then, are in ridiculous shape. Yeah. yeah, and Joe grows a beard. <laughs> I grew a beard. Joe grows a beard. Yeah. Yeah. So, if I grew a beard, you couldn't see it because it would be white. And then I'm <laughs> Irish, so I'm you know, the, like human, double whammy. I'm like mayonnaise in human form. So yeah, Thomas um, has a full beard. You just can't tell. Yeah, yeah you just can't. Like look, even my goatee, you could some if you're not up close, you're like, you know. So uh, where was I at? Oh, yeah, shameless plugs. Uh, you can also uh, now find us on the YouTube, as we mentioned, which we still don't have a vanity URL. But that's okay because we don't have vanity after all the comments about Joe. <laughs> that's right. Uh, <laughs> uh, what do you mean? What do you got, a mouse in your pocket? What do you mean we? <laughs> YouTube, YouTube.com slash Joe OnlyFans. <laughs> yes. Hey, man, so. I'm not above it. <laughs> yeah, we, yeah, we really. Uh, Joe OnlyFans. Re- Joe OnlyFans. We, we need to rethink the. Uh, the Patreon model. I guess that's yeah. true. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll, be, I'll be I'll be taking requests and uh, all kinds of stuff. <laughs> Pretty sure you yeah, can't definitely. do that on Patreon. I right. keep getting <laughs> kicked out. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> patreoncom slash spoilers. We're for five bucks a month. You get all sorts of bonus content, but not the dirty stuff. And uh, you help us out, and that's very appreciative or appreciated. Uh, and then, uh, what else am I supposed to talk about, Kevin? Did I get everything? Uh, I got it. That's pretty much it. Yeah. That's it. Okay, we're done. I we're think done. they're doing Hellraiser next or something, but you just let, leave that to them. Yeah, we'll yeah I'm, we'll, I'm not getting we'll into all that. that I, don't, I don't blame yeah. you, brother. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, it's like the set of whatever happened to Baby Jane between those two. So uh, <laughs> so don't worry, darling. There, let's start talking about the movie. The, I feel like I'm the only one on the show who liked it. I did not not like it. Yeah, I'm yeah. very mixed on it. Okay, Nicole. Like before we start, we started recording. Yeah. You like made a comment that made it sound like you were like ugh, and so <laughs> I'm I'm very ugh about the ending of. <laughs> I, yeah, it it doesn't stick the landing for sure, and 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 it's like a Twilight Zone episode where it's like if the if the ending doesn't work, you're just like oh okay. Except those right. are like twenty five minutes <laughs> where this is yep. two hours. Two hours. I guess I gave it a little leeway because. To me, like, I kind of, like, I felt from the trailers, like, oh, like, this isn't really where they're at. Right. And so I was never, like, caught up in the the mystery of it as much. I'm like, yeah, that's about right. And and I wasn't as, like, (laughs) as disappointed. But your dog yeah. is Paul. Yeah, your dog yeah, is see? not a fan. (laughs) I'm so sorry. (laughs) No, you're fine. I will will give you credit, Nicole. You you, you got on that mute button real quick. Yeah, that was well, super impressive. Professionals, series. yeah. Sorry that that will be on the recording, but <laughs> oh, um, it's fine. yeah, it's fine. he's he's five months old as of oh. a few days ago. Um, okay, and we're still working on being quiet while mom is <laughs> podcasting. He was better at it when he was younger, and then lately he's discovered barking. Um, he has opinions. He wants to get them yeah. out there. There's nothing. He wrong. does. He yeah. really does. Like, he, when I'm watching movies, more... he will bark at things sometimes. He <laughs> it's like, why weren't there more dogs in this movie? Yeah. <laughs> Where are the dogs, honestly? We need, like, we need <laughs> dog representation. Good question. In this like weird ideal society, why did every family not have a dog? They were the, too uh, hard to code. Yeah. The, <laughs> the remake of The Stepford Wives, they had a, a beautiful CG dog in there, right? <laughs> so right. they can do it. But I, yeah. I think that is one of the things that – the ending doesn't land and that's what my biggest problem was because i was invested in what was going on and especially because of florence Pugh, she is so yeah. good yeah and you care about her i think she saves the movie if it weren't for someone of her caliber being the star of it i think that you would lose interest but you're so sucked into her performance and you're trying to figure out what is going on even though you know something is but it feels so similar to the stepford wives already that when the twist lands and it's just a little bit of a modernization, but essentially they're just doing an updated step for wives. You're mm-hmm. like, Oh, because I just expected more from it than a, than an updated step for wives. And it's supposedly an original screenplay. And I don't know if you guys know, but uh, two of Dick Van Dyke's grandchildren wrote the screenplay or wrote the yeah. story. This, this, oh, really? was, uh, this yeah. was one of those, what are those scripts called where they, they're on the blacklist. This was a blacklisted script. 2019. Mm-hmm. And so Olivia Wilde snatched that up after right. Booksmart, which was fantastic. I, I loved it. I think you guys did. Nicole, oh, absolutely. Like, I, it's I love one of the Booksmart. Few, yeah, it's one of the few movies in the last 10 years that I've bothered to watch multiple times. And 
it honestly might have been my favorite movie that year. I it, positively love. Was, was that 2020? 2019? No, it no, was 19 because yeah. okay. we were in theaters. It was, so it was right before the pandemic, right? Yeah, yeah. So she has that amazing directorial debut. We all loved it. It was fantastic, and so she scoops up this one of the hottest movies on the blacklist to make. But I just expected more for all the buzz around it. Of course, with all the drama that we don't even need to get into. But this movie's so overhyped. And you're just th- and you're just thinking, what is the the twist? What is going on here? Because obviously things are weird from the get. And then when they reveal it, I think it was it was kind of a letdown. And so when it doesn't stick that landing, you just feel like, well, what did I just watch? You know, I was so invested. And now I'm like, oh, that's what it is. And uh, we've seen it in things like The Matrix. We've seen it in movies like Serenity, which we just covered a couple of years ago. We've seen other reveals that are similar in The Village. And so I'm not saying this that movie. That Hugh Jackman movie was like th- that. Was that Serenity? Was no. that Serenity? No, no. it's McConaughey. Oh, that's yeah. Right. Oh, but uh, there was a Hugh Jackman movie that oh, was really bad. Reminiscence? <laughs> Reminiscence? We just there we go. Mm. How but odd you... that I couldn't remember the name of a movie called Reminiscence. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you've, we've seen something similar in so many other films, and the movie feels so much like Stepford Wives. So when it's revealed that it's just essentially spoilers, a technological way to reprogram women, it's like, okay, they've been doing that in so many, you know, <laughs> from the book to those movies to the remake of Stepford Wives to all these other, The Matrix, you know, about control and well, I think uh, I think they're trying to say something different with Harry Styles who plays Jack who's I mean I don't know how else to describe him other than an incel I don't know what else but he's describe. not an incel because he's he, nailing her they're married like but, that's but not like, an incel it's nah, a, see, maybe I, a one cell but maybe it's, but I don't it's, disagree with that but there is a level but it's adjacent of like, yes it's adjacent right he's, and I think, he's a uh, he's not working he's Sitting in front of a computer, I, I don't know what he's doing on that computer. But here's the, what he's doing on that computer. But here's, well, that's fair. <laughs> here's the question, though, Joe, and here's why I one of the reasons why the ending doesn't stick. Why is Florence Pugh married to him? We I don't, don't ex- think that though they're not married, are they? I think they I are. Think so, but if not, if they're not married, then that's well, adjacent, right? They're yeah, they're in a very I living together. I think yeah. they, I think they were a happy couple. Right, and she well, became. Everybody's happy at the beginning, or you would be a couple. That's exactly that's what I'm saying, okay. though, right? Like I think they were at one point happy, and what we're seeing when yeah, we get hush. to the reveal is this relationship has deteriorated so much. It's that outlived a, its usefulness ex- to, for her, especially. Well, yeah, where he can't keep up with her anymore, right? And there maybe there was a time when she was in med school, or when they she wasn't this this brilliant surgeon. That we, I, I guess she's a brilliant. They tell us that she's a surgeon. I assume. She's yeah, we brilliant. didn't see if they lived. Know. I'm assuming. Yeah, I guess that's did. true. She did. She did, yeah. she did say, "I'll see you later." After she sewed that guy up, we don't know what. It's a good sign. You know, yeah. it's, it's, well, she but didn't like, say to the patient. She said it to the other people in the room. That's but, true. So I think for this movie to work, oddly enough, it needs more time outside of. Utopia. I agree. That's or, what I'm or, saying, right? Yeah, because we question what the character dynamics and the relationships and. We don't get that, and so we're just like, oh, it just ends. You've 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 brought up something interesting. You've given right. us this reveal that could be very interesting, but then just end it. So without exploring it, it feels kind of like all these other twists we've seen before. Yeah, the- I also just question, and I think like my biggest issue is I think the script, particularly for how many rewrites it went through, is still so messy. Agreed. But like, why does no one presumably notice that she is? you know, gone, essentially. Yeah, that, like, that's a great if point. she's, she seems like she's on a friendly basis with people at her work. Like, are we supposed to believe that she has no family or friends who would, you know, want to check up on her? <laughs> well, it did, so did you guys read about the original script? No. no. So I've got an actual explanation for, well, I don't have an explanation for that in this script, but I do have an explanation of kind of where they were going. There's an article from Variety that, that I guess they got a hold of the original script and that would, from when it was on the blacklist, somebody read it and wrote it about it. This is an article from Insider 
referencing the article from Variety because that's what I pulled up first. <laughs> it says, the ending was a lot clearer <laughs> in the original script. That's right. Uh, <laughs> when it came to the ending, a complete overhaul was done. In the script's ending, the big reveal that Alice, who was named Evelyn in the original script, is hooked up to some machinery that puts her in an alternate reality that is more fleshed out. She returns back to reality in the Van Dyke script, not through getting shock treatment like in the movie, but comes across an exit in the portal back to the real world, which is disguised as a house for sale. Hooked okay. to a machine and IV, she gets out of bed and crawls to escape from wherever she is. She learns that she's in their apartment in the future 2050 to be exact not only that but she finds a certificate of divorce with their names on it she gets in front of a futuristic computer and learns about a company called alt life in which a man can live in cyberspace that resembles 1950s suburban america where quote a world controlled by women is no longer exists all the man has to do is fake his wife's death and strap her to a machine so she can share the experience with him Alice then finds articles saved with headlines about her going missing, the police searching for her, and finally thousands mourning when the search is called off. Alice hears Jack return home, plugs herself back into the 1950s before he's aware she's escaped. Back in the 50s, Alice attempts to escape for good. Jack figures it out, and along with the other men in town, takes her for the shock therapy. Things go back to how they were, Alice being submissive, very similar, but that's all a ploy. One night while seducing Jack, she knocks him out with a shovel. He wakes up tied to their bed. She pours scalding what? hot I, coffee. I, hang on, hang on. What what kind of sex are they having where there's a hey, shovel there? Hey, whoa, whoa, like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm not trying have... to kink shame. I just really want to know. Literally, am, where does the shovel come from? <laughs> am I missing out on something delightfully dirty? Do I need to incorporate a shovel and do I mean, I'm just saying, maybe you get some sort of, like, snow shovel and just take a swing. And see maybe, what happens. Maybe, maybe it's hidden somewhere. I'm going to presume it wasn't part of the I will also act. say, if you're going to do that, Tom, make sure you ask first. Right. <laughs> I th- Consent is. Ex- do you again? hear? You hear that, right? Yeah. Yeah. I think it's the smoke alarm in the hotel. Oh no. Uh-oh. Oh. I don't that's, know what that is. That's two episodes in a row, Tom. Maybe yeah, I'm not the one that's. One. I'm not the, the one hotel. that's hot. Hang on. Let me call the front desk and see <laughs> what's row. up. Yeah. <laughs> like, get out of the hotel. I like how the universal Run. first smoke detector is going off is, why is that going off? Like, no one actually <laughs> follows what the point of it is. It's always, oh, that must be accidentally going off. I know, right? There's nobody answering the front desk. I assume either because oh, they're, on they're, fire. Char- they're charged yeah. to a crisp or um, they're getting so many calls. But if they're That's charged also- to a crisp, then the fire's in the lobby. And what the Ba-ka! fuck am I going to do? So wait, yeah. we might as well. I'm on the top floor. What do you want me to do? Yeah, well, I'm yeah. not a top floor. Oh, sorry. I don't got so, that kind of money. So she reveals that she knows all about alt life, but Jack says he has no idea what she's talking about until she attempts to ram a broomstick handle up his behind. Whoa. Jack then finally <laughs> <What>? admits <laughs> that at least it wasn't the shovel, right? Yeah, he's so, not an incel anymore, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Jack then finally admits they're living in a simulation. She asks him why he did it, and he says he just wanted them to be happy again, and her work became more important, which led to their divorce. Jack tells Alice where the exit portal in their house is back to 2050. She leaves him. Sounds and goes like back she to... already found the exit portal. She if sure he did. My drift. <laughs> <laughs> she leaves him and goes back to the future. Meanwhile, Jack finds a knife, cuts himself free. She's in her home when he appears, so he gets out. They have a physical fight which leads to her stabbing him with a kitchen knife, which sounds like old Frank's ending here. And then back in 1950s, Bunny finds Jack dead with Alice unconscious next to him. Alice wakes up back in a hospital in the 1950s. She's told she killed her husband, and she dreamed up the future, quote-unquote, where women were empowered. And then the final scene, Alice sits in a courtyard of psychiatric ward. Bunny comes to visit. Previously, Alice tried to convince her they were inside a simulation, similar to this movie, this version. Bunny shows up with flowers before she leaves, leans in, and tells Alice, there's an exit portal right behind them. Bunny leaves Alice in a sign of renewed life, begins to slowly head towards a door. I mean, it's similar, but there's, there's bits and pieces more in there ex- that are. It feels like they made it more about like they left it a little bit more ambiguous as to whether or not yeah, they no. were actually in. Yeah, an alternate reality. I like the idea that you would be going back and forth, being like, yeah. "Wait, yes, it is. No, it isn't. Yes, yeah. it is." <laughs> like, yeah, and I think yeah. that's. I think that they they explore more of 
what's going on outside of the simulation, which adds a little bit more depth to it. And, I'll, and then, yeah, there is that idea of the gaslighting. This film really doesn't let the audience in on what's going on, even though we all have our guesses that something's off, of course, but you don't know until the very end. And then it speeds it along so quickly to where you're left asking these questions about their relationship and what does the cult look like outside the simulation? We never see them. Yeah, that's that's my biggest complaint is when she when you get to the very very end of the movie, right? And she wakes up. Yeah. And then it just it just ends and that felt lazy. You, you know, like I didn't expect them to have like a PowerPoint presentation and a TED Talk <laughs> where they explained how this all worked, but I wanted some insight as to like Okay, but she's still got to get away from these people in well, yeah, the I mean, that's a good point. real world. Because Bunny does say they're coming. Like, they're coming to kill you in, in your real body. You have to get right. out of there, which is why she's waking her up. But that's a good point. Is that she does at the end of the – I mean, like, the last thing we hear is Alice, you know, taking this big breath, and then it's over. So, yeah, I But mean, she's tied up. Uh, so. Is she tied up? I th- I th- he strapped her down. Oh, I think you're right. She, she strapped, strapped her down, down with yeah, like yeah, cuffs, yeah, so right. she's tied up. How is she going to get out? They're coming for her because they know that she knows, and she might escape in the real world. Right. So I, I just she's, it leaves. She's also now tied up next to a dead man. Yeah. Also a good point. Even if they don't come, like they don't come for her, like that's not going to go well in the real world. <laughs> I mean, on the upside, she is tied to the bed, so it's like, how am I supposed to kill this guy if I'm tied to the bed? Yeah. Right. So she has an excuse. I don't know yeah. how that's going to – I don't know. I'm not yeah. saying it's a good excuse. I'm just saying – I also yeah. just feel like there's this question of, like, before we see that she is, like, sort of determined that she wants to not just save herself but all these other women who are yeah. out there. And then, like, who knows if that ever <laughs> happens. Right. Well, that's, that's another question. <laughs> they don't need to answer all the questions, but they bring up so many rapid fire at the end, and then you're left asking, well, how does this work? So at the end of the movie – all the way, I know we're kind of going in reverse, but maybe it works this way. All the women start to seem like they're almost waking up. Well, they, the whole... uh, Bunny does uh, actually. I think well, Bunny Olivia is awake Wilde, the whole time. She, which I think is fantastic. Like I yeah. kind of dig the fact that when we get the reveal that when Alice starts telling her everything, she's like, "Yeah, I know." Like my, she's like, "Yeah, but your kids," and she's like, "They're here, right?" I didn't lose them, and I was like. That's kind of insane. I mean, it's not kind of. It's insane, but that's one of those instances where you're like, no, I get it. Yeah. Like, if, if, if this woman lost her children, for, and we don't know why or how, but the fact that she can keep them as children, they're not going to grow up in this world, and she gets to be a mom to these two kids, I, I think that was a pretty – that was the reveal where I was like, that's – kind of great right when like, you see this uh, other yeah. character who's always pregnant like right she and never... smoking and drinking right yeah which i guess yeah. it was the if we're saying it was the 50s uh, maybe yeah. you could get away with that a little bit but still yeah they didn't know <laughs> yeah, right. but that's where that's where the film starts to get really interesting right it's the character and motivations of bunny i play. think this might have worked better as a tv show maybe where yeah you could explore like go off and explore these other characters because i i was interested in that i was also interested in their relationship in the real world and you know like um how it got to where it got to yeah, because I think that, like, there's a dynamic there that I think you're seeing more and more of, which is, the f- like, the female is more successful than the male, right? Like, you're you're seeing more and more of that in relationships, especially as yeah. more women complete college than men these days. And, and women are have to, having to, you know, more frequently kind of marry beneath their station. And... My wife. And it, <laughs> all of our wives did, right? Like, we're all married to women that have more education than we do. For sure. Yeah. Right? Like, I mean, I didn't graduate from college when I was 45, and even then it was a, a mass communications degree. Like, that's not <laughs> real. We all know that. And, you know, my wife's got a, got a master's, right? Right. And so right. I think that there are a lot of men. And this is where, like, he's not an incel, but, like, you, I think there are men who – as the as their wife becomes more successful and she's the one bringing home the money i, yeah, I think that yeah, that, you're not that wrong. rubs I, them the wrong way i also did notice though in his like questionnaire that he's like answering about 
well, he's like getting it all set up and whatever. Mm-hmm. It's like, you know, like her name, whatever. And then it says pre existing relationship. And he says, right. yes. That's Which pretty creepy. Oh, that brings is a up weird. the question of that's not like it doesn't have to be. It, right. Is that a deal breaker no. for the and company? And <laughs> then I'm suddenly looking at like the rest of the couples in this simulation being like, okay, so who here is not actually in a relationship in the real world. Like, who oh, here just, like, I see what you're saying. You just, you just snatched like, up some woman. Yeah. Yep. So I mean, I guess so that's Nicole... hard to be right. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because I, they're saying that, and this is basically a solution for people in unhappy marriages in the original concept, and they throw in that really creepy line of, are you in an existing relationship? Meaning, this cult will just go out and snatch someone. Yeah. But I guess I feel like everybody is, I, but I guess we don't know, right? We, we have don't. zero idea. We have the no other idea. Yeah. It, well, Nick mm, Kroll has uh, Olivia Wilde Bunny, the the character Bunny played by director Olivia Wilde, is okay. So aware. here's the question, though. So but they is have Nick to... is Nick Kroll aware? I think so. I Why? think I well, the reason I, I think so is because I don't think this company would take on a woman as a client. Okay, mm. interesting. That's fair. Uh, I mean, Bunny is aware, and she or, chose or, it. Or but her deep. husband started the process. I don't think they'd let a woman bring a man in, but they apparently oh. would let a man bring in a woman who was aware. Okay, that, gotcha. that makes you sense. Know. That makes sense. So yeah, yeah, I think, and especially at the end, the way that Nick Kroll they're very acts, open-minded. They'll they'll allow women to consent. They just don't have <laughs> <Yeah>. to. <laughs> oh my God. But you see the way Nick Nick, uh, Nick Kroll acts at the end. Stop her and all that. I mean, he he, man, he is very. He, he's so great. At being a complete douchebag, like oh, for sure. Yep. He, I, I love Nick Roll. I think he's insanely funny. I think he's very talented, but he does the have that. The league, his character on the league, was my introduction to him. Yeah, and it's like that has never left. If you've never seen the <laughs> league, I highly recommend it. It's very funny. It is one of uh, the funniest shows of all time. And I'm not a sports person, but yeah. I watched the entire series of the league and absolutely loved it paul Shear, nick kroll jason manzoukas the guy um, who's, that lied who's the guy about that lied about 9 11 yeah the comedian whatever that guy the guy that plays was. kevin in the show yeah yeah it's but a great it's, show it's, high, it's I highly oh recommend. and jean lajoy yes <laughs> as taco as taco oh yeah. my gosh that the whole thing with the, if you've seen it the eskimo <laughs> eb b and yeah, and all that Eskimo the way that it Brothers, yes. keeps building oh my gosh it's such a funny show but yeah if you if if you know nick kroll though from his comedy his other shows he does voices big mouth big, he's big in mouth yeah he's in so much stuff but he's a hilarious guy but you know that leads me to the question with all these pairings and the casting of this movie so stepping back for a second without getting into a whole bunch of controversy but you know shia labeouf was supposed to be the harry styles character jack I think and that makes more sense. I, and I, I, I think like it does I, too. When you I, think I about well. the real world versus getting all fancied up, right? Because right. Harry Styles is suave, and they have to make him look not suave in the real world. Where I could see Shia LaBeouf being the quote unquote incel or whatever you want to say these guys are that are roping people there, into this. There needed to be more of an attractiveness level mismatch that, between exactly. these two. That's yeah. fair. Although I will say I do think that like. The issue is that Shia LaBeouf would have fit a lot more into this, like, very little twist section at the end, The twist section, yes. But Harry Styles is perfect in this world that we're in. Like, he in the fits... In the 1950s world? Exactly, in the 1950s world. Like, I think he pulls all of that off so well, and he's so charming. I agree. That I think you, you can let yourself get a little bit comfortable in it for a little while. And, like, you can kind of fall under the spell of the two of them together to the point that, like... There was a moment where I was like, "Is he in on it? Is he not?" Like there, there were moments between them that it it felt off, like mm-hmm. their chemistry felt off. But after when you when everything happens in the reveal, I I wonder if that was a choice because they're since they're off in the real world, like they right. like subconsciously was she the chemistry was off because she was subconsciously already checked out in the real world. Does that make sense? I, yeah. It's a you can fall back on that knowing what the plot twist is. Now, is that because of act, the dip, the difference in acting abilities? Sure. or sure, is that sure, beca- sure. I mean, it works with <laughs> the did, twist, certainly. I, I did jokingly say that they, uh, as I, I was talking to a buddy, and I was like, I wonder if he just couldn't keep the American accent. So they were just like, look, 
speak with we'll just make your guy british in in the in the simulation if you could if you could just do like five pages of dialogue with an american accent and make it convincing you'll never have to do it again and he was like i think i can make that work (laughs) it very much is getting and i don't think he's as bad in this movie as no i really don't no but it but it is giving high school theater in which like the lead female is like the most talented person you've ever seen (laughs) and the lead guy is like it's the one guy who wasn't playing a sport Sweet. Yeah, great, right on. That's how I got all my roles. <laughs> <laughs> that is a great way to put it, though, Nicole, because seriously, because Harry Styles is not bad in this movie and not as bad as people are making him out to be. Yeah. Florence Pugh is so next level amazing what? in this film. And that's Harry exactly Styles it. looks like he's acting so hard. And and again, it's just it's, it's all that my fault. It's, <laughs> and, and it's like he's not bad and he, oh my gosh the casting you're right in this 50s world is great but yeah i think it's hard when you're there with one of the best and she's well, I also, certainly I, yeah, I he's think surrounded he... by other like great yeah. actors yeah. like he's yeah. also acting against like chris pine and Gemma chan and yeah. nick kroll is like, is he acting against Gemma really... chan because i don't think she has any lines oh, in this movie. I was... what a which listen. is a shame what? Hey, she, I'm okay, not... but she is conveying so much just in yeah. her facial expressions and stuff. That's fair. That's like fair. she's underused as Jimmy Chan is literally always underused. <laughs> it's right, such right. a shame. But yeah. I think that she does go a long ways towards like creating this whole image of Frank. But yeah. I also, I, I also think that the, the we're just going to spoil it now. When she stabs Chris Pine, and I was just like, wait, what? She... Like what's happening right now? Because I feel like I feel like that's a whole part of a movie. Like there's no there's yeah. no lead up to her being like it should have been a TV movie show. theater cheered. <laughs> <laughs> oh my Which god! I, I had a great theater full of people. Um, nice. Well, nice. I will say the first time Harry Styles yelled, some woman like went like "woo," and then everyone <laughs> burst out laughing. Oh um, and so then every time he had a scene where he yelled, everyone like started giggling. Oh my! <laughs> I, <here's, laughs> because I, we were I, like, I, "That lady's having a great time." <laughs> yeah, she's having a blast. Yeah. I will say the one scene that stood out to me with him is the scene in the car where he agrees that they're going to leave. And she gets in the car and he's like, you know, I'm sorry. I, I that one to me, like that one was was kind of a, a gut punch where he's, you know, the 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 red shirts are pulling Florence Pugh out of the car. And he she's screaming at him like, you know, I'll be I, I promise I'll be good. Like things like that. And just his his reaction to all of that, I thought was really impressive. And I thought that that was the one time where I was like, all right, this this kid's got I was something. like, there's the Harry Styles. That's ex- Dunkirk. There it is. Yeah. Yeah. Right, right, right. Do you think with all the rewrites that there was another explanation for what was going on in Victory World? Because the reason I ask that is because when you see her as a doctor, the orderlies are wearing red jumpsuits. Oh, really? There's an orderly mopping the hall, and he's in a red jumpsuit. Well, and there's other points in the movie where you kind of think they're Wizard of Ozing it, too, because you see the women that are in the Busby Berkeley dance sequence type thing, and then she sees the hospital, the nurses or whoever's assisting in the surgery are the faces from the Busby Berkeley thing. Yeah. So yeah. there's more of that, you know, what is real, what is fake, and who's in on it type thing. And those are the questions that would be really interesting to explore because – what are all the men doing when they leave? Why do they have to leave at the same time? You're saying there's no men that have money that don't have to leave and go well, make I think, money? Aren't, well, aren't, I, I think there's are two, they making I, money or checking on their person? I think there's two reasons to, well, I guess, three. One, check on check on the woman that they've abducted. They've got to feed water, yeah. right? And then, but they also, Harry Styles says, though, right? Like, I, don't, I have to make enough money to right. be able to. And I think some of them have to go out and do something to make money. Mm-hmm. And then I th- and I think the third reason is they have to create the illusion of this this lifestyle, right? Yeah. And the lifestyle is the accepted I mean, let's just call it what it is, conservative this is alt right people. They, they don't so, say yeah. it, but like it is. The lifestyle they want to create is the the man goes out and earns a living and the little woman stays home and cleans the house and, and does all that stuff. You know, you see her vacuuming a spotless house repeatedly. So it's like, one, it's it's role play, right? Like, they've got to leave because the man works nine to five, and that's just how that is. But some of them probably don't have the funds, like, sure. like Harry Styles. And so he's got to go out and do something. something. 
you know. But you know also, what would I have think- been great though, so if if there would have been a little bit. Again, I would love the cult thing to be explored and to maybe see Frank and how he is outside in the real world. But what if when they left, the reason they all have to leave eight to five is because Frank is having them do nefarious things, and that's part of their payment to be a part of this program. Something mm-hmm. they would explore. What yeah. are they all doing? Oh, because Frank is, is it's like a weird sh- mafia. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Seriously, your payment is now you have to go do hits or steal yeah, things yeah. or or blend in and steal steal Recruit information pe- something yeah or people yeah. And i know we're that? writing it for them but i wanted a little more than just oh they it just sh- all leave and it should have been a tv show <laughs> this, like, yeah. there, like there's a lot of depth here there's a lot of there cool is. things that they could explore like mm-hmm. if they treated this like lost where all of a sudden you get an episode that's just about you know well, Bunny and I her husband or whatever. Yeah. So much more about Kiki Lane's character. Yes. Because we have this woman who's already sort of gone through this, but oh, sure. we see that she doesn't figure out a way out to the point where she's willing to commit suicide in this world, which But we, do, do, you, like, do you think that she knew what the ramifications cuz it feels like she's already got the out, right? She's already been out. Do you think that she knew the ramifications of killing herself inside the simulation or she was just checked out? That's, I don't know. But I'm also questioning, like, did she actually get out or has she just figured out that this isn't real? I well, took it as she died because in the movie, when I first saw it without mm-hmm. doing reading and talking to people, I thought that either Bunny or Jack said when a man dies in here, he dies in real life. But I, they don't really aren't clear. With, I mean, that would seem That's weird. That's true. I would like explanation of why women wouldn't die. But it, but presuming yeah. that they all die in there, then I you never see Margaret again. Maybe it's the idea. But they keep saying that she's coming back. But, well, so it, they, it is a question of like. They say that, but we never see her. So I don't know if that's more gaslighting to keep her in check. Because we end up seeing once they do the shock treatment and the part where the red suits are pulling her out of the car and Jack has you know turns her in basically we see the shock treatment and florence Pugh comes back she's been reprogrammed and apparently her memories of what's really going on are erased but at that point knowing that people are, wait can come... wait 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 but they're not erased because she they're erased for a second but as soon as he starts singing that song well right it breaks but it, it breaks she's, she's that's, that's what that's fair yeah, yeah okay okay <laughs> So the she her memories have been erased and she's back. Welcome home, Alice, and all that stuff. And yes, they didn't do a perfect job because the the memories are there triggered somewhere. But we never see Margaret back as like oh, and she's back too. But this made me question more things. Okay, why on earth would Frank ever, 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 ever let Alice back in that simulation after all that went down? Why? What is to gain? Obviously, once he sees what happens. He knows that was a horrible decision, but it just seems so, so here, unbelievable. This is, this is what well, I think. I think that's why they have the scene where he's like, "Oh, you you're intrigue a fun, me. You're a fun challenge." Like you know, like I think that's okay. their ex, their rationale to explain that away. I still agree that like it, you know. But I I think also I, I think the reason they let her back in is the same reason they let the other lady back in is if they don't let her back in, what are they gonna do with her? Yeah. Right. Like if they mm-hmm. don't let her back in now, they got to release her back into the wild and she's going to be like, hey, here's some crazy <laughs> and, or or they got to kill her. And so, you know, and I don't think they're above killing her. But then but then what do you do with her? Now you got a dead body on your hands and right. that's a whole other thing. So I think that's the reason is is more just lo- the logistics of. What do you do? But that's also a question that could have been easily answered with one line of dialogue. Yeah. Yeah. I also I got, I got major. Part. Who is that moron? That conservative. Um, you're going to need to narrow it down. I know that conservative. Like you still got to narrow it. Down. Motivational speaker. <laughs> the Frank character is based on Jordan Peterson. That's Olivia it. Wilde said that that is who she based him on. And then, of course, there were countless YouTube videos and you know rants going on and on about that and whatever. But it, it I mean, it, it is very clear she's not necessarily sugarcoating what this is well, a statement and, and on. I, and what I what I think what she that he being he being Frank lets her back in is because Frank doesn't think that Alice is smart enough to to figure this out so he's like I'll bring you back in and you know you'll come in here and you'll think you know what you're doing but I'm always going to be 
20 steps ahead of yeah. you. I think he sort of enjoys that he's like, oh, this is one more place where I can prove that I am better. And like and these other women, yeah. it was too easy. But yeah. with her, like it's a it's a challenge that I know I can win. Okay, even though I he's get wrong. that. Yeah. <laughs> then, you know what? And if it is a it's commentary. Like hubris. That's yes. exactly. Yeah. And, and knowing that obviously these men think that they're so great and that they have the right to do this the fact that they would then go and push it like that and in a very stupid way all what they're doing is obviously horrible and dumb but like the fact that they think oh but we could just throw this woman back in here and she won't figure it out that is a good commentary i just figure with all the trouble she caused and and she got out and they put her back in but you're right then the logistics too tom those are good points she also killed a lot of people well, yeah i mean she i mean well i mean she killed her husband she killed Jack, she killed uh, everybody in those cars. But that's not before she Whoops. put him back in. I mean, th- well, no. I mean, when when you when the men die in the simulation, they die in the real world. So when she smashes Jack, also, what was he doing? Like she was kind of going along with it, and then he just like starts trying to like bear hug her to death for no reason. <laughs> Like well, she was waking to be up working. again. She woke up again when he played the record. The whole movie, she's humming this tune that she cannot figure out what it is, and come to find out in the real world, it, they it's used Baby to... Shark. No, yeah. <laughs> yeah. In the real world, nothing they used... will get that tune out of your head. I know no, it's, they... it's awful. I'm <laughs> so, glad my kids are older now, so I don't have to hear it anymore. So uh, she, they dance to this song in the real right, world, right. and it's coming through, and she can't figure out where she's heard it before. And so when they're having this romantic moment, she's been shock treatment and, and reprogrammed, and then he plays the record, and then it comes back to her, and she starts having flashes of, oh, the real right. world and the Busby Berkeley stuff and the programming. Mm-hmm. And then I think he figured out, well, this isn't going to end well. Now she's back, and she's going to take us <laughs> but on. Yeah, she, so, but she kills him. She smashes him in the head with the with the Glass. ashtray, which is just oh, yeah. one of my favorite ways to like people die in movies. Yeah, because smoking you pick, is dangerous. It like, is dangerous. Like, they've they've warned us. <laughs> that's for the years. long. That's the long game. Florence Pugh's <laughs> yeah. like, no, I'll end this right now. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> then she kills the doctor. Right, the doctor's mm-hmm. in one of those cars that she yeah. smashes into. All of the men that were in those cars that were chasing them. When all three of those cars smash into each other, there's no way any of them survive. And I think at that point, isn't that when when Shelly ends up being like, you know what? You don't know. Shelly being uh, Frank's wife. Gemma Chris Chan. Yeah. Gemma Chan, yeah. So well, they're on you, the phone. You've mucked this up so bad. <laughs> I'm taking over. Yeah. Well, it also makes me think, and this is where there's another ex- interesting exploration, is I think that Gemma Chan was really pulling the strings. I she don't think let, you're wrong. She let Frank think that he was think in charge he, and yeah. so brilliant. But I think that ending is clear to where she's like, you know what? No, you're screwing this up. It's really her master plan. And so there's, it's like the exploration of, well, now we don't know if they ever get caught. Does Florence Pugh get to them? What happens to the program? We still have all this evil stuff out there. And, coming coming next year, season two of Don't Worry, Darling. Well, and I mean, they could explore it through a TV show or something, but there, yeah. but that was really interesting when you see her take over and you're like, whoa, wait a minute. And it opens up all those questions of what was she really doing behind the scenes, building him up and all that, where you think she's worshiping him. But my take on that right. was, I think she made Frank. I don't think you're wrong at all. It's interesting. And you see this a lot in, in power couples, especially before it became societally acceptable for for women to reach levels of power in our society that you know that like the man was the face of things but the woman's back there really doing the things or having or having a whole hell of a lot of input you know more than she's ever given credit for yeah that's that man's old saying i would love to know what their relationship is in the real world like i I agree with you who had the money behind it? Mm-hmm. Like, who had the idea and who had the money? Which well, he he definitely a has like in. a podcast or something. He's he he had. <laughs> I don't know what yeah. that was. I don't it know. If, you know, evil I, podcaster yep. once again. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> or we, and we mean, all know. I mean, we all know when you got a podcast. I mean, it's just a <laughs> license to print money. Oh, and let right, me like, tell money. you what. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but no, he's definitely got something going on, and I don't, I don't know if well, yeah, we Jordan see, Peterson we guy see. has a podcast or not. But but he I writes books he and does. stuff, and, oh, okay. and and he does a lot of public speaking engagements. So yeah, he certainly has a has monetized that, and and we see 
Harry Styles character listening to his podcast. Like um, like intently, like yeah. huddled over the computer. He's I mean, got, he's listening he's to got it on multiple. A, he's listening I'm to it on. He's taking notes. Yeah, he's listening to it on a desktop. What sort of sociopath <laughs> no. listens to a podcast staring at it on a desktop? Like on, you, on YouTube. At it. <laughs> yeah, like that's he was. That's he was. He was like elbows on on his knees and like. Like he was curled up by the fire. It's like you ever see the pictures of like you ever see the pictures of like old time radio where the family's sitting around <laughs> staring at the radio while yeah. Jack Benny says something. Yeah, just right, like, right. What What are you doing? Like yeah. that's that can't be how that people really uh, absorb that entertainment. But yeah, like he's on a on a desktop listening yep. to the podcast with multiple monitors. Right, like it's, yeah. he's got all these monitors in front of him, and I was like, well, they're doing their best. To describe exactly who this guy is, yeah, but uh, that's a know. really interesting exploration, though, of how people are indoctrinated into a cult sure. and become a part of it. And so, I just feel like we that need a being cult, man. We I know we talk. I would. I was... we... The real spoilers. I cult. just like imagine you know a cult literally starting through a podcast. Yeah, like, yeah. But, I mean, oh but they're out there. I mean, what's the Alex Jones? World I was thinking like? the same I mean, yeah, thing. Yeah, you know, like that's yeah. not that the... whole world is. Yeah. I think it's just hard when they throw it at you. The reveal is kind of like, oh, it was a simulation. Like, we've seen that several times. And then you're like, I want more of that. I want to understand more of the dynamic because you now threw a twist in, which is a little bit different, but it doesn't get explored enough, I don't think. But there are a lot of positives in this film. I think it's a beautiful, beautiful looking film. The production Agreed. design, the costumes, yeah. the, all the 1950s cars, homes, gorgeous, the cinematography. This is the, this, the, uh, the alternative to Tom's rule about always having fancy nice cars you know it for makes a time sense for a time it makes sense here my complaint whenever you see movies set in the past and they show the cars they're always beautiful because they go to car collectors to get the cars yep. and it's like if it's not if it's 1955 not everyone is driving a 1955 <laughs> car you're right? driving a 1935 car right. or 45 they're car, gonna, yeah. they're gonna be beat to and like and yep. so it's like there should be this whole range of, of cars but it's always yeah. everything looks like it just rolled off the showroom because those are the easy yes. cars to get i will say know? harry yeah. styles car chef's kiss yeah yeah there's some beautiful looking cars dope. but yeah. was that old corvette yeah yeah, yeah, the silver Corvette, which is, man, it was great. It was so awesome. the town of Victory looks gorgeous. Production design, yeah. absolutely amazing. The cinematography by Matthew Libatique is stunning. It is, and I think that's part of why this movie draws you in. You have Florence Pugh, sure. who's great. You have her performance. You have the beautiful aesthetic. It's a lot to look at, and it holds your attention the whole time. I, I have a question about a, a scene. Yeah. And it's one of the scenes you see in all the trailers, and there's like, it's one of the, ads you see on facebook right now where the plate glass window comes in and starts I to think, crush her what yeah. is happening i think like, that's i mean obviously it's her world boxing like her I, in i right? get the like metaphor but what is literally happening why I, would the world that's do a good that question. i think to me it seems like we're seeing that like the programming that they're doing on these women is not actually foolproof and to me, it feels like it's messing with her brain chemistry in some sort mm. of way. Oh, right on. That she's having these, like, hallucinations. Because we also, she keeps having these, like, weird flashes to yeah. the dancers and stuff. And I think that's another one of those times where, like, she clearly something has, like, messed up in mm. how she's meant to be programmed. Or she's well, breaking through. And you see mm -hmm. that when, it, again, at the end, the, you see Harry Styles strapping her down, and he's playing a projection of those yeah. black and white dancers that I call Busby Berkeley because they're all in a circle doing the stuff. Like, yeah. yeah, and you know, a lot of people might not even know what that is, but it's a, it would be an old-timey reference. So <laughs> you see so. <laughs> when, when she is strapped down, she's watching the projection of those dancers, and so I think that is part of the hypnotism that goes along with the VR. It's like a laser-projected thing that's uh, on these weird futuristic glasses and it's projecting the VR image, not like a... Well, it's just a futuristic version of Clockwork Orange. Yeah. Right? Like they're, they're, they're prying open. her eyes open. So it's the same. I mean, it's yeah, basically Yeah, it's a similar the programming. Thing. Yeah. So, but instead of VR glasses, we would wear like a headset. It's laser projecting the image on top of her eyes. So she's just staring. But it's also... 
has the dancers playing on a projection on loop projected onto the ceiling. So it has something to do with keeping her in that trance as part of the world. And that's what's sure. starting to break through as the programming, like Nicole said, is messing up. But I also saw the uh, window closing in, which I thought was a great scene from a claustrophobic standpoint. Sure. You felt for her and like but uh she's also her whole world is taking place as she's strapped into one room and so that's a metaphor i think for her world closing in on her yeah i mean the metaphor part wasn't you know it's right up there with the rat and the departed but um (laughs) but i was just like well what is literally happening i saw a facebook comment and normally like when people get pervy on facebook about the actress i'm just like oh but yeah it was such a funny line i had to give the guy credit it was a facebook ad for this movie that's just that scene you know and and the comment just said hi my name is bob and today i'll be reading for the part of plate glass window (laughs) (laughs) that's pretty good and i was like okay There's a lot to like about the film, that the acting. I, I think there's a lot of good actors in the film, like we mentioned. Olivia Wilde's good in it. Nick Kroll's good in it. You have uh, Chris Pine is good. I God, at Chris first, Pine's not given anything to do. I, He's well, just Chris Pine. Well, but this, at first, no, this is the beginning of Chris Pine doing villain roles. Yeah. I'm okay. Okay. Because I think he's realized that like Chris Pine is one of those guys that I actually kind of think is maybe a character actor trapped in a leading man's body. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, <laughs> That's fair. That's totally. And fair. I like, and not that he's not good at being a leading man, but. I want to see him like do more of this type of thing, but like go even further. Yes, there's, it's so there's juicy. A, there's, there's an underlying sinisterness. Yes. Word, we'll call it sinister to him where like you get the, you, you know, he, I think he was perfectly cast as Captain Kirk. Like the young, mm-hmm. I, I think that was your, he was amazing. Those was movies are fun. I really the, like him big in those fun movies. movies. And yes, I wanted to see great. That, that fourth one with time travel with Chris Hemsworth. <laughs> I think would have been so cool. Yeah. It would have been. But there is, Nicole, I totally agree with you, is there is just an underlying sinisterness to him this entire time. Um, and now that you've said that, I was like, you know who he would be? It would be fun to see him be is Lex Luthor. Like oh, him yeah. as as like that. What a waste you, of hair, though. It's yeah, you have hair. to. Yeah. Like no, you, no, no, no. You just you do the Hackman thing where he, he wears a bald cap and he wears a wig because he's so vain. But you, you know, don't cast that know, hair and then that's not true. Use the hair. <laughs> not use yeah. it. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. But I do think like having him be the you know the guy in front of the camera, the charismatic dude, and then mm-hmm. when, as soon as that door closes and he is just the worst possible man. That's a that's a great point about him being a villain. Here on, I think, I mean, and Kirk I, is kind of a villain, by the way. He's kind of and the I bad also, guy. I really admire Chris Pine. Works with more female directors than like any other man in Hollywood. I swear. Oh, right on. And he he talked several years ago about like making it like a point to do that. Mm. And this is another example of him doing it, and I really admire him for that. But I think like he does seem like he's having some fun with it. Yeah. And I also he I think he perfectly shows why people are willing to go along with it. Like, you can see the appeal because he, you know, he's very obviously based on, you know, not just Jordan Peterson, but these kind of guys. But he also, like, feels better than them. <laughs> he, he's not, you know what I mean? He's not he's so obviously slimy as most of those guys are. Well, yeah. this, um, I thought it was a great point of casting him because there's a yeah. mismatched dynamic which, you know, supposedly with Harry Styles and Florence Pugh, but all the couples you can see where there's a bit of that, uh, a gap between the... Yeah. I know, think the, the biggest one we see is, is it is it Bill and Violet? They're well, the two Bill, new ones, right? Bill is, you start to notice something is weird because Bill is very weird. And the yeah. people that would be in a cult like this doing this to women would be weird. And right. Bill is the first one that doesn't have it together. Like these other guys are hiding it pretty well, playing cool and suave and all that. Bill, Bill is the one I am convinced just snatched this woman off the street. I Bill, don't think I, you're I, wrong I, at all. I bet you Bill is a, a kidnapper one. Or, yes, or yeah. she's like his neighbor or something. Yeah, because Bill I, I is... Think... Yeah. One of the things that the movie gets right that you're kind of touching on without realizing it is part of the reason cults work is because there's a sense of community, right? And this whole thing is built around community. And, like, even people who were in cults and are no longer in cults, they realize Mm -hmm. that the cults were bad and they were right to leave, will tell you, I miss that community. I miss that, like, they will never be a part of something that feels as 
all encompassing. Season for- two of the season two of the Vow is coming. Oh, right. I've seen it. The, oh yeah. man, it's bonkers. Like yeah. that whole Nexium thing is bonkers. Oh yeah, I watched. I did watch that. I didn't realize season two is coming. Then yeah. like a couple. But weeks. yeah, like you, you know, I I just listened to a really good podcast. It doesn't get a lot of lot of love but it's just because it's not i think by a major company but it's called worldwide the unchosen church and it's fascinating because it's about this church that's a cult and they have a change in leadership and then the new leader is like hey spoiler alert we're a f- cult we got <laughs> yeah. we, we gotta wrap this <laughs> <up."> <laughs> and he shuts it listen down. my, oh, my whole crazy. letterbox review for this movie was just i would gladly join a cult run by chris pine uh. so like <laughs> clearly <laughs> they're pulling you know it off you're not wrong i maintain actually and like I hope my feminism card does not get revoked for this, but the real well, issue the in this, it, so well, yeah. the real issue in this world is the fact that these women aren't given a choice. Right. Like, that is a big I'm problem. Like, if I could willingly go in there. With see, the exception great. of Olivia Wilde, everybody else. Yeah, that's a good point. Like, Which I would fair. love to just go buy everything on credit. <laughs> well, that's, that's the interesting point in the, the, the fact that this is told from a female perspective, the fact that you get Olivia Wilde as the director, right? Because two men wrote this story idea, and yeah. then Olivia Wilde comes in and directs it. i got to point out, it's fascinating that the two men that wrote this, the work that their grandfather will be best known for looks like this world. Right. Right? Yeah, I think that's like, a great point. I mean, it, the Dick Van Dyke show looks like this world. This is the Americana that, that yeah. yeah, the perfect household life or whatnot. So yeah, but so you've got the the men came up with this very clever idea, and then you uh, have Olivia Wilde goes and gets the rights to it. She brings on Katie Silberman to re- do the rewrite. She's who wrote Booksmart with her, and so you get this female perspective, and I think they do a really good job of it. And one of the things that they're trying to say is that the men don't think that the women should have a choice in these things, and so you get that. the The whole point is that the men think that oh well, it's their right and the women should be happy to be there with them and they should be the ones going out and providing well, I, th- I think their thought process is well i've given you everything what well, you well, should the, be well, happy style says right? that He's yeah like, exactly. i just wanted you i i thought that you would be happy and i do like her response where she's like yeah but you didn't give me the choice the irony took is it away from he's me. he's not happy either right, right. like right he's, he has to go be miserable for eight hours a day so he can come back and have Really, how much time is he really spending in this world then? Because he's going to get home at five and she'll have dinner waiting for him. And then, you know, well, that's why they get right to it. There's no time to waste. Yeah. Every time and he then, comes home, they're getting at it. Well, and then dinner we know well the okay. So here's the thing is that's I don't know I, that I, I call that dinner he was eating, but uh, that's but that's but, the question, though, right? Like, it's not really a question, but anytime they engage in any sort of sexual interaction, he's going down on her. They're not having se- like they're not having inner like intercourse. He's giving her pleasure, and I just thought that was a like if in this whole world where it's about the, it's about the man, it's about whatever. They they never once show him having sex with her. I have an issue with the film, and particularly though I think in how it's been marketed and how Olivia has talked about it. And that they want to play it off as this, like, great big feminist piece. And, like, yeah. part of that is that, like, it's all about female pleasure and the sex scenes and whatever. And I'm like, that's great. I would love to see that in another movie. But this is supposed to be a movie about the way women and mistreat yeah. women. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so yeah. it doesn't make sense. That, yeah, I don't – that's like, what I mean. You see the view of it from a female perspective. <laughs> but then what they're trying to say is something very different to where if the men are orchestrating all this, why would they be focusing on and the like, women? they've – made the world that they're in too good like oh sure the, you know what i mean to the point that like if i i just don't really buy that the type of men that they're trying to tell us would do this <laughs> i agree with you would create this world for these women well i think it's the subservient nature of the 1950s men go to work women stay home and shop and cook and clean i think they've modeled it on that time period for the way that things were but i i still get what you mean that yeah. it doesn't like their it motive... feels like a fair trade off right like if it, like yeah, obviously if you, if not you, if you're making if you're making dinner 
yeah, I'll take like, care of the other one. Oh, like I, I don't ever have to worry about any material issues and I got a vacuum. But really, all she does, I shouldn't say all she does, but I mean, what we see, she sits around with her friends and, and hangs out all day. Like that doesn't seem like the most awful. It's like that episode, of the, it's like that episode of The like, Simpsons. We know that obviously like this is the idealized version of the 50s and that in the actual 50s like there was so much more right. going on and the mistreatment of these women and the fact that they're not allowed to you know sort of pursue what they want to and are are being told no you can and cannot do that and whatever sort of in exchange for this this lifestyle and i think that because we're not getting any of that in here like we never see these women really get denied anything mm-hmm. yeah um we never hear any of them like express a desire to go out and do anything else. Sure. Um, it, it just doesn't feel, it doesn't feel in line with the sort of messaging that the movie thinks it's sending. Well, I, mean, I think you like, get it in the subtext to where like Florence Pugh is a brilliant surgeon and look, he's kidnapped her so she can sit at home and cook and clean where she's obviously a very talented person that had aspirations that had this great career. And so you're right. They don't, spell it out in a way to where they explore that but it's kind of there but then we don't spend that it much time in the real world so unnuanced i think yeah. like, i heard, I heard it's somebody just else not the feminist masterpiece that i think olivia wilde yeah. no i made. think you're i think some <laughs> i heard on a different podcast man, i wish i remember which one it was they describe this as like this genre of film is insanely hard to do like mm-hmm. this blade runner or the matrix like that whole style of filmmaking is almost impossible to get right and not to downplay Olivia Wilde's directing ability but this almost felt like she decided to enter the Olympics without going through the trials I think ultimately the direction is fine it's the screenplay and obviously she had o- oversight of that right, she right. picked it but but I think the all the stuff that's on screen is is great and i think part of the reason part of the reason the ending it, it feels so disappointing is because so much of the other stuff is so good yeah there's that, a lot there's a lot to unpack it's, yeah it's like if the other stuff wasn't wasted. so good you almost you almost kind of feel betrayed by it because it's like it's so good up until then that you're just like what happened why right. did you but, get yeah but even to that point it's um God, the screenwriter who came in, it's Katie Silverman, right? Katie Silverman, um, yeah. She did such great work on Booksmart. Sure. Mm-hmm. And that is, I think, such a brilliantly feminist film and, like, really sort of rewires the way that young girls are shown in film. Yeah. Um, and allows them to be something that we rarely have seen them get to be and sort of, you know. Especially that, that, that rated our comedy world, right? Right, especially, yeah. like, I think it's partially so brilliant because of the casting of Beanie Feldstein and, like, what that sort of says with who her older brother is and sort of sure. the roles that he's gotten to play. Um, that for her to turn around and have this script <laughs> feels like such a step down. And I know, obviously, she was doing rewrites, not writing it, but still, the idea there is so good that you feel like you would expect a screenwriter of her caliber to be able to come in and fix the issues with it. And it feels like it got further away. Yeah, from, that's fair. Based yeah, on like what we've heard of the original script, it feels like it got worse. Right. It's, I I think what it comes down to is it's like when an A student does B work, they tend to get C's. Yeah, that's great. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. We and we've said that before, and that's happened. We, I think that's happened in the last couple of years. I, I I do think we maybe just touch not touch on, but do you think? Any of just the insane controversies around this, the production and everything that has Spitgate and all that stuff, like, does that have an effect? Oh, I don't know what's coming. <laughs> no, uh, I love that. It's great. Like, does did that have an effect on the movie itself? I think it made more money because of I, it. that's yeah. what I thought too, right? Like, I, it, I think it, it got enough. Publicity. All of my grad school classmates have been asking me about this film and they all want to go see it. Literally, there was a day that three of them texted me before I got to class to be like, before class today, can you explain to me what's going on with Spitgate? (laughs) And I was like, yeah, I can. Um, And I will say, I think like I 
have long been saying this movie was always going to make money because if there's yeah. anything that Harry Styles fans are willing to do, it's spend money on that boy. Sure. And <laughs> like I've seen what his tickets go for. They're very willing to buy a movie ticket. And Florence yeah. Pugh um, has a huge following too. Florence Pugh has a big following. Um, Chris Pine has a weirdly big following uh. actually. And I think that like a lot of people really loved Booksmart and were very interested to see what Olivia Wilde did next. But then I right. also think like all of this publicity for it has been good and, and i'm not a person who believes that like well there's no such thing as bad publicity but i do think this is a case of with all the stuff that's gone on around it many people have responded to it by being like well that makes me want to support florence pew even more mm-hmm. right. or that makes me want right, to support right, right. you know x even more like whichever side you're coming down on you don't see and a I lot of negative for the film it's always a uh, right. more interest and more positive in the other well, people and I even, the, like, as the film has gotten, like, even as, you know, Harry Styles is getting these reviews that call him terrible and whatever, which I don't really think he is. No. But I think that honestly still makes people want to see it more. Oh, it's the curiosity. Because, Morbid yeah, curiosity. Absolutely. Exactly. And it's that sort of thing of, like, oh, yeah, let's go see the, like, very famous, you know, successful pop star, like, fail at something. <laughs> um, and I think <laughs> Who like, that like sounds that? really bad, but, like, there is an appeal to that. Like, I, I also, and, I will say yeah. that. I think his career is very rem- I mean it's almost it, it's just like Justin Timberlake's right it's almost the exact same trajectory where he's the front man right like he's the front man of whatever that band that was right I mean he ended up be- I don't think he that band was front- designed to have a front man because boy then bands he always kind of rotate. What, but, One yeah. Direction was specifically designed to have a different front man and he yeah. ended up becoming the front oh, really? man because he was yeah. more that okay. Mean, yeah, I mean that's how boy bands are built. Like it always it rotates, right? It, it came out like earlier this year that Simon Cowell had set it up to have. I can't remember. I think it was Liam as the front man of it, and like had kind of promised him that. Whoops. Um, but then Liam is not front man. Material. Sometimes it just doesn't work <laughs> out that way. <laughs> like, that sounds mean, but like, where is he today? Right. Like, no, that's a fair statement. That's. But yeah. I, just, I will say that's that like Justin Timberlake. I Justin mean, honestly, Timberlake is the exact same way. I know people way. are going to see In Sync come back together, or whatever. But really, who? broke out of NSYNC. It was Justin Timberlake. It's how it is in a lot of those. Look at Beyonce, right? I mean... (laughs) Justin Timberlake similarly has had, like, a weirdly good film career. That's exactly exactly my point. I like Justin Timberlake as an actor, and uh, I think when I saw him in Alpha Dog, I was like, this guy's good. He's in a Coen Brothers movie. (laughs) (laughs) That's true. That's insane. That's insane. Yeah. yeah, But that's my point, is I think when Timberlake first started acting, people were like, good lord. Like, come on. And now look at him, right? Like he can, he can. I wasn't though. Uh, you know, people I, do. You, people do that. They do that without. But you got to give people a chance because that's. I don't like, disagree. That's like saying Pattinson. Oh, he was in Twilight. It's like <laughs> watch some movies Which, that he I was in it. Twilight. I get it when someone like that goes over into acting that there is a certain level of like, yeah. okay, well, he's getting cast just because he's a pop star, right? And right. there were probably more talented actors who've done their training who could have had the role and i i but there are certainly other men who could have played sure. this role but, yes. but i also am kind of like let's see how he is that's what i'm saying and, and he fit well he was fine uh so the uh, another question i had was with those earthquakes uh, yeah, what? so they they blame it on project victory so all the men that leave at the same time and their little synchronized driveway dance and all that stuff you know visually very cool looking again maddie libatique is an amazing cinematographer but uh they're they are saying like oh what's going on with project victory and the women sometimes start to question it and they're shut down very quickly and you're led to believe that those earthquakes have to do with something that they're doing i think some of them maybe even florence Pugh question are they making weapons there or what is project victory it- it seems like it's some sort of like nuclear. <laughs> right. It definitely has a Manhattan Project vibe. Yeah, very, very much. Like so. it feels very like that. Out that's... in the middle of the desert. Yeah. Like... It, yeah. It feels like it's Arizona or New it Mexico. It almost and... sometimes feels to me like they could have done something more interesting with this actually being truthfully in the time period and like are all these women actually getting you know some sort of poisoning because they're too close to this right that's not bad, I, that's not bad. yeah it's not bad area. there's yeah there's a lot of there's a lot of interesting ways they could have taken it i agree but yeah. so i kind of wondered so what are the earthquakes then and i wish they even gave us some kind of explanation like smoke monsters uh, well no but what <laughs> uh the system because being unstable for some reason you know what is happening 
and what's weird with that that doesn't make sense to me is the fact that the women all experience them collectively. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right, right, right. And like the men experience them too because we see one happen while yeah, uh, they're yeah, because in the he goes together. That's Same right. Same with the plane right. crash. Yeah. Wait. Well, and I'm just like, well, with the plane crash, at least like we only really see um, Alice see mm. it. And right. with like whenever she has the blip and like the thing with the the window, like that's all her. Whereas with these, I'm like, if multiple, so I, I can chalk it up to like, oh, it's like the programming's messing up, like whatever. Sure. There's yeah. a glitch in the like, you know, whatevers. But whenever they're all collectively experiencing something like that, I'm like, that doesn't make sense. I would just, I would love to <laughs> them to say like, I mean, if we were to see where the servers are stored, if they're in Frank's basement or whatever, yeah. and there's a water heater that's broken that's making it vibrate. You know what I'm saying? I'm just, I, it would have been interesting. Yeah. into it. Yeah, it would have been <laughs> right. interesting to see how the real world of what's running the system causes those earthquakes because, oh, it's actually this. I don't know. That goes into that exploration of the real world. What is happening? So I thought that's kind of like they show that. And then what is the plane crash supposed to be? We do see uh, somebody's dragging like a like a toy. Pl- so I Margaret, think, I think Margaret had like Kiki, a toy plane. Kiki Lane's son had the toy plane that he was dragging around. But then they killed the kid in the simulation. But that's the so the kids are fake, right? But they yeah. don't know that. Kiki, no, I mean, I, I know, Margaret but that, didn't know that. But he disappears. She brings him out to the desert, and they oh, never recover him. That's but, right. That's but right. But they're not real. So I. I'm not really sure, but he's dragging a red plane, and then Florence Pugh sees the same, I would take it as that's where that visual came from. It's the same, but a real red plane crashing in the distance. But I wonder what, we don't really ever get an explanation of why this But it kind of visually warbles. It it, does, yeah, yeah. And, you know, and there's, like, goes past a certain point. Like, at the time, I thought, like, they're in a dome or something, and, and, you know, it's gone outside of the dome. But you make a good point that, like, the, the bus driver never acknowledges the crash like right so maybe he didn't see it uh, and that it's just in you know her that's interesting stuff. that the bus driver is a worker in this system so the bus driver is it, doesn't yeah. he's, an, he's an is, npc that's something like, is he real or not that's i don't I, think he's real i don't think any of those guys in the, i mean those guys in the red suits are not real i don't think they're real yeah, just that's the, the question because they're just not the way they're running up. up the mountain right it, they're doesn't, not, it doesn't look real? natural the doctor i think the is doctor real. is real or you could make the argument that they're real, and this is how men who are single pay their way. Okay, mm-hmm. you could make that argument. That's fair. I also, or I guess, presumably, like if Frank, whatever, whoever he is in the real world, is running a company, presumably he, he has like employees. Red shirts. Yeah. Well, so I, it, I, it, I always it, took it as the doctor is his programmer. I think the doctor because they said so that, that's what I'm thinking. Like, is the doctor his like right hand man? I think his, so because like, he they say he's the oldest resident and he co-founded right. the place with Frank. Right. So right. Frank is the pitch man. Frank is the guy that's Which handsome, then, well spoken, and then you got your mm-hmm. programmer that made the technology. And I was going to say, then I also wonder if Nick Kroll in the real world actually works with. Frank That's another that great question. I wonder because he he might be high up if he has he's able to have a partner Bunny who knows she's there. That's a lot of responsibility. There's a comment made from Bunny to Alice early on about Nick Kroll's character being high up in the company. Oh, that's you're right. Yeah. And Bunny runs to Frank. You know, she mm-hmm. tells Frank what's going on with Alice and that she's yep. aware. I was also going to say earlier, I didn't get a chance, but what you're saying about Frank, him being charismatic and handsome and well-spoken, that's exactly how these cults work. So I agree. Like, oh, there's, yeah. there's that discrepancy between the couples and there isn't with him, but that's how these leaders work, right? Even when, yep. what is it like, like Ted Bundy or who? Who's the Ted that's Bundy? Was, uh, that's just a serial. serial no, 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 I know, but, I know. But, but he was. But you're right. He was a very people a of... good looking dude. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I mean, yeah, that, that's... that whole the whole scene in uh, Silence of the Lambs where he's like faking the broken leg to get mm-hmm. the the gal to help him move. That's exactly. I mean, Ted Bundy would do that. They rope them in with the charisma, and that's also how these cults operate. Is they make it seem so appealing in the community, like Tom mentioned, and so he's a perfect guy. I yeah, think but then the you cast... look at Keith Raniere, and you're like, what? Well, there's always what a, exceptions. What a, but, there's what multiple a, methods. Yeah, that's fair, that's fair. <laughs> what, a tr- what a troll. But I think it's good casting. And at first, Chris Pine wasn't really working for me. I love Chris Pine. I think he's great. I think especially Hell or High Water is one of my favorite movies oh, he's been so in. Good. Yeah, he's, that was so good. He's so good. So, But to me, I was like, oh, I don't know about him playing this character. And then when you get the reveal, though, I retroactively was like, okay, he's doing the cult leader thing. Yeah, that was pretty good. Yeah, that was pretty good. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. It's pretty good. And that but, scene uh, with him and Alice in the kitchen is... Oh, yeah. That, to me, was so chilling. Yeah. Just oh, because my I gosh. think that's one of the most, like, real scenes that we get to in the <laughs> sense of, like, that feels very much like, um, you know, the, the sort of... That women deal with in terms of like sure the gaslighting the boss. Well, I was going to say, yeah. man, I can I tell you? Like can I tell you a story? I had a, 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 a an incident yesterday walking. I'm in New York and mm. uh, right now, and we came to see the Music Man. It's my birthday. It's funny. First off, it's my birthday, and so when people say, "What are you in New York for?" I'm like, "Oh, it's my birthday. What are you doing for your birthday?" I'm seeing the Music Man. Everybody immediately gives my wife a Pagan? look, like <laughs> like she made me go to the Music oh Man my on gosh. my birthday, and I'm just like, I love the music man no like, that's for me is, i picked it it's like it's i okay. made her go to the music it's man okay. <laughs> like yeah like like immediately they're like oh you poor son of a bitch oh. so <laughs> we're we're walking down we're like in Times square like we're getting out of the show and i had a moment where i felt like i like oh my god i know what it feels like to be a woman i like for a tiny bit i'm yeah. i'm walking down t- Times square manhattan after the play lets out and it felt like somebody grabbed my butt. Like, oh. and I was just like, first off, I'm like, who would grab my butt? <laughs> right? Like, like, first off, no woman's going to grab my butt. And any man that wants to grab my butt can just go find another man to let him grab his butt. Like, it's not hard to find <laughs> another man to like, grab the butt. So, like, my butt has very little value in the open marketplace. I acknowledge that. But it felt like totally. And so I looked over because I, like, and, and it was like this lady had a bag, like mm. a, you know, and like, you know how like the bags, those really oh, like nice swung, ones, like, like the way they, they can kind of fold up and like it hit my butt and it just kind of folded in <laughs> and the bag <laughs> must have grabbed molded my butt. To it. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and so, but I, it was just, it, but I found it fascinating because like my, my stomach instantly dropped. I was like, what is happening? <laughs> and I was just, and, and I sent it to my wife and she's just like. Well, imagine the entirety of your life is that. And I was like, mm. yeah. like." And you it. do the weird thought process of like, okay, but who could have done it? And no, like maybe I'm just gaslighting myself into thinking right, that that yeah. occurred. I, like, yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. It, was, it, was, it was very weird. Just the, like, I, like I said, my stomach instantly dropped. I'm just like, what is happening? <laughs> I did want to say, Nicole, I think you are spot on about that scene is they do have this pretty impressive like back and forth. And you think that she's got the upper hand when they get to the table and then yeah. all of a sudden he starts gaslighting her to the nth degree man he and plays since, it so cool the way that he, he, he is not worried for one nope. second and, and she since plays he is who he is soon. she did yeah. play him too soon yeah. Yeah. yeah but since he is who he is to these people yeah. like they accept it no pr- no only, problem he's the only celebrity in this world yeah mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah 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 and i thought i thought nicole that was a that was a great call about both of those scenes back to back like that yeah, um, it, it's it pretty so scary. Like, yeah. because that is how men get away with these things, especially men sure. in those like positions of power. He feels very much like a politician, or sure. you know, some CEO a celebrity, some company, or yeah, a celebrity, whatever. And you see that, like, no matter what she says, even though these women, you can tell, you know, are kind of like, oh, hold on, like, you know, like maybe she has a point, right? They're not going to stand up to him. No, well, and well, there's probably some of the women that are like, you should be honored. You're lucky. Like, I, think an, I mean, it's gross, but it's there. I think another reason why this kind of didn't land for me, I mentioned some of the things we've seen before. One of them is Westworld. Westworld sure. is one yeah. of the greatest shows out there. It is so good. And the whole thing there is about control and people going into this system and the the guests have a choice and the hosts do not. And the way it's playing out is we're going through these different seasons and the, and it's shifting. And so and not to spoil Westworld, but it's a really great show. And the dynamic is shifting every season. It, it starts to go and flip to the other side. And so we've seen how it is when basically the wives in this movie are the hosts in Westworld and the guests are the men. And we're starting to see that power dynamic shift as the seasons go on. And now the hosts are having control, which would be like the women then being the ones that are taking over over and giving the men a taste of their medicine we just wrapped up the third season and so we've seen this play out over a series so well and we've seen the exploration of that power dynamic and we've seen it shift 
So when you get the reveal on this one, I can see where if you haven't seen as many movies or maybe haven't just finished Westworld season three, it might be a little more mind blowing. But when we've seen it explored so well, it's hard to be wowed by it. And without the wow factor, it just yeah. kind of falls it, apart it, at the end. I keep going back to it should have been a TV show. Yeah. Like there's yeah, there, totally there's so much potential for world building and, and the premise and all the other characters that the they should have just done more with it. There's so much yeah. more they could have done that a movie almost feels like a waste. And in today's world, with prestige television being so good, you can really explore mm-hmm. something like this in a in a way that's artistically interesting that I think the subject matter. It used to be like you didn't have the money or the or the caliber of talent typically to go make a really good TV show with something like this. So a movie was the obvious place for it to land when that's just not true anymore. And I, I think this would have been a better suited for TV. Oh man. And now I don't, you know, I don't want to forget other shows and stuff and I'm definitely don't want to spoil it, but severance severance explores yeah. similar theories. So for sure. I, I mean, we're watching all these TV shows that handle it so well. And yes, they're a little different, but they are very similar in the things that they're trying to say. And so but in fair, in fairness though, the two shows that you're quoting right now, Westworld and severance, they also haven't ended yet. Right. So our one of our complaints about this is it doesn't stick the landing. Well, those two shows haven't yet tried the land. So like we might end up in the same place with those shows when they're done. No, we might. It's just that the time they take to explore it, I think, is really the key where it's like, wow, they yeah, they they handle it really well. And we're left with cut to black. It's over where those shows get to keep exploring and. Totally. In a perfect world, that cut to black would be the end of season one. Exactly. And you'd be like, oh, yeah. man, I can't wait for season two. And mm-hmm. and you're just – and obviously, like, they're not going to make another one of these. I don't think it's going to make enough money to justify it. It sounds like uh. these people all kind of hate each other. So I don't know <laughs> that you, you're going to – Well, like, they killed, they killed the, you know, half of them off, so it's not that big a deal. Yeah. Touche. I, so. will, I will say that as negative as we've been, because we have picked some things out, I think it's because the film has such potential. And I yeah. do still I think, think yeah, it's worth watching. I, think I th- still th- think it's worth watching. I don't want to say, I like, agree. this is a terrible movie and no, we've just hated all. it. I'm, I'm considering going to see it for a second time. I, I, I honestly it right? is such a it again. fun in theater watch. Like, people oh, sure, in my sure. screening were really reacting to it, which I love. And I feel like it's the kind of thing that I'd rather go see it again in a theater than like wait and watch it when it comes on to streaming eventually. Yeah. So <laughs> you, by eventually, you just want to see. You just want to see who. What? Yeah. You just want to see who responds to Harry Styles and who doesn't. I mean, I do. <laughs> like, it's a fun game. <laughs> this time, this time she's going to be the girl that goes ooh yeah. when he yells. That's no. I'm going to do that at the Chris Pine scenes. <laughs> there it is. You mean <laughs> when he, said, when he whispers? Like going. You mean when yeah. he whispers two certain words? Yes. <laughs> yeah, I got gotcha. you. Yep, yep. I, I feel like the criticalness, though, against this movie by most people, and us included, is that there is so much potential, and there yeah. is a lot of positive to it. There are tons of positives in this movie. It's yeah. just it doesn't land, which is a the shame. The first two-thirds are gorgeous yeah. and beautiful and wonderful, and it's just that last third where I, where they needed to wrap everything up and, and so, do the I reveal think, right, and it fell apart. That's yeah. the one spot of, of a movie that you can't mess up. Right. right, you can maybe mess up the first third, maybe a little bit of the second third, but if if you drop the ball in that last half, that's all people are going to remember. It's what they walk not out remember. quite as right. bad, but it reminds me sort of how I felt about last night in Soho, where mm, that's I love the premise. Yeah. It's starting out so good, aesthetically, it's perfect. Performances are great, and then they went about the reveal, and I was like, "That's what we've been building to." Mm-hmm. This I, I, that's <laughs> the last fourth. I agree. Like, I think the first. Yeah. Th- Three fourths of that movie are fa- amazing, and then the yep. last fourth is where they kind of drop like, the ball. I was like, "Oh, <laughs> dang!" Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. So anyway, I guess uh, I guess that's it for this one. Let's go around the uh, virtual table, and everybody can say where to find them. This is Joe. You can follow me on the Twitter at Joey Butts B U T T S twenty one. This is Kevin. Follow me on Twitter at Kevin R Bracket. And Nicole, where can they find you and your wares? Yeah, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram and Letterboxd at Nicole Ackman 16. And I've got link trees and different stuff there to where you can find my work. Awesome. And uh, you can find me on Twitter at Roger Kubert or on Facebook at Facebook.com slash Tom O'Keefe. You can find the show online, Facebook.com slash Real Spoilers. While you're there, like the page, join the group. And of course, don't forget our Patreon, Patreon.com slash Real Spoilers. And for those who somehow are still unaware, we're now available on YouTube so you can see my glorious Manhattan hotel. That's it. That's the <laughs> that's all of it. 
that's that's <laughs> that's all as big as it was. I think that's and bigger that's, than most apartments there. And that's yes. four hundred and fifty dollars <laughs> a night. Yeah. So uh <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. So uh anyway, thanks for tuning in and until next time, Truman overcomes his fear of water. Get ready for a spoiler. Won't say it twice because we already won.